Good morning, everybody. Today's Thursday. We're expecting another uh, snowfall here in northwest Tennessee. I've got some things that God has laid upon to my heart that I feel like that my viewers need to know about. I realized this morning I just now woke up. I hadn't had my first cup of coffee yet. And uh, I look kind of rough because I haven't cleaned up or nothing. But after observing what has went on out of stupidity pertaining to the Texas crisis that they're facing right now in regards to something like 3 million people without electricity in the middle of a ice storm or a cold, cold uh, event is only negligence upon the proper authorities that are in control of these type of situations. And I realize everybody isn't perfect. Nobody's perfect. And everybody makes mistakes. But these types of mistakes has already costed, I looked it up a while ago, about 23 people has already been noted as being frozen to death in the state of Texas. And that's just of as of like an hour ago that they know about. Um, there'll be lots of senior citizens people. There'll be lots of people um, with different types of diseases, different types of health issues that won't be discovered until possibly a day or two from now until people realize that they haven't seen so-and-so and so-and-so coming out of their house or being active. And that's whenever people realize, well, that person has frozen to death. It's pretty common to hear of these type of occurrences happening up north um, in areas that get like 20 below zero, wind chills 40, 50, 60 below zero in some of the places up towards Wisconsin and northern Illinois, um, you know, Nebraska, Wyoming, um, northern Wyoming, et cetera, et cetera. But to hear of something like this happening in the South is only going to be looked upon by other people as being careless. It's going to be um, gross negligence. And it's going to be something that the state of Texas really brought upon to themselves because of their arrogance towards thinking that they had such big shoulders that they didn't have to rely upon nobody towards being independent with their grid, um, electrical grid down there, that they didn't have to rely upon other people to help to uh, help to survive. You know, since the 1990s, Texas has really showed its arrogance in boasting about its prosperity towards wanting to succeed or exceed away from the union. And for some reason, whenever people get this high-minded to the point that they feel like that they're invincible, a lot of times it isn't just Hurricane Harvey that devastated Texas of about $125 billion cost, the same cost basically as Hurricane Katrina costed in 2005. But whenever people get this arrogant that they think that they're above and beyond the chastisement of, of the Almighty pertaining to them being so arrogant that they feel like that they're invincible. That's whenever God steps in and he shows himself towards just exactly who's actually in charge. My heart goes out to the people that's freezing to death right now. It doesn't matter if it's in Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas, Nebraska, Missouri, Arkansas, Illinois, or up towards other parts of the, the country. My heart goes out to all these people that are tragically dying, um, not just over freezing to death, but over people who are dying pertaining to the coronavirus. My heart goes out to all these people. My, the point that I'm trying to make right now to my viewers is that what Texas has done towards letting their guard down, 
They have allowed for their citizens to be fully exposed, to be vulnerable to this type of attack. And you have to look at various natural occurrences, regardless whether it comes in the form of a hurricane, tornado, regardless whether it comes in the form of floods, regardless whether it comes in the form of locusts, regardless whether it comes in the form of ice. You have to look at it as basically attack from Mother Nature. And if we, as a society, hadn't been properly prepared in these events, <clears throat> it's really no one's fault but our own. It's kind of like the old cliche that we had working in the construction industry a long, long time ago, whenever I was just a young man, that the first drop of rain, after you realized the storm was coming up onto the construction site, was God's fault. But the second drop of rain, if you didn't have enough sense to get out of the rain, was your own fault because you didn't have enough sense to properly prepare for that storm. Once more, I'm not saying that everybody's perfect. Everybody makes mistakes. But this is one that's going to cost Texas some human toll on the level of the hurricane that hit in the early 1900s. And I'm not making this prediction, but I'm, I'm and I'm hoping that it not be so. But this is going to be a devastating toll to human life after it's all said and done with that. I'm just afraid that the people in Texas are going to realize what that they have done here. It's very arrogant in people thinking that they're above and beyond the elements of nature, regardless whether it comes in the form of one area or another. And whenever people become so arrogant that they don't take proper pre precautions in Mother Nature, only shows basically their own stupidity and what the, tragically they have to go through. Once more, my heart goes out to all these people. And I pray to God that not a single another person is going to wind up freezing to death. But I'm just afraid, my intuition, is that they probably will. So this program that you're fixing to watch isn't just about Texas, but it's also about the state of Tennessee, the state that I'm living in right now, that feels like that it's going to be under attack by its own government towards being a Second Amendment um, sanctuary state in protecting people of being able to have the right to have guns. Once more, keep in mind, it was the Tennesseans that fought against Al Gore in regards to the environmental changes that we were seeing radicalized going from one extreme to another. It was the people in Tennessee that didn't want to take the initiative towards backing a ministry, though I had put out various warnings and advisories towards electrical disturbances to come. I don't forgot now how many people all over all over the country is doing without electricity right now, give or take probably about six, eight million people because there's people all the way up in Oregon and Washington State um, that's without electricity right now. But whenever God sends forth people or a person to warn the rest of the people. And whenever the people respond the way that they did with me, towards wanting to shut me up, um, criticize me, categorize me as me being loco or, or crazy or, or somebody that was touched in the head. Um, whenever society turns their back on one of God's own that is out to try to help them, by giving out these type of advisories, just like the advisory that I put out in 2005 towards a bloody road ahead to the 43rd president of the United States. Whenever society has a tendency to want to ignore God's elect, God's chosen, then is whenever we have to wreak the havoc of seeing the consequences towards what we're seeing right now. And it's not just in the form of this particular ice storm or this particular cold wave. You know, all the rains and the snows that they're getting right now out in California sounds like a good thing. But tragically, it's also causing a lot of bad stuff. Why is that? Because you're going from one extreme to another. You're going from an area that was tremendously dry, that had an outbreak of all kinds of fires this past last summer, the summer before, and the summer before. 
which is totally unorthodox, totally out of kilter pertaining to it being normal. And now all of a sudden you have all these flooding rains and all these big snows that's coming out of the Sierras, and it's just adding that much more insult to misery. Once more, we're dealing with we're dealing with a society that has become very, very um, emotionally unsound. We're dealing with a society that has turned stuff upside down to the point that they call good, bad, and bad, good. We're dealing with an emotionally society right now that has become radicalized. We can see that pertaining to the events that happened January the 6th up at the Capitol building. My theory is the more that the people become radicalized towards being a radical, the more that Mother Nature becomes a radical. It's almost like looking into a mirror. But the mirror is actually going the other way. Okay? It's them looking at us. And as we become emotionally, psychologically um, unstable, so also does our weather events above us pertaining to Mother Nature. These are all based around the sound facts of the great sorrows that the Bible talks about that will fall upon a humanity simply because of the wickedness and the sin and the unpredictability of what humanity is doing while they're upon to this planet. One final thing that I want to say about um, the greenhouse theory of everybody going over to alternative fuel and doing away with fossil fuel and doing away with you know basic standards of, of electricity coming through the grids and stuff because so many people down in Texas rely upon um, on windmill power. If you don't have all the occurrences, regardless whether it's sun, wind, gas, oil, and to some degree even coal, if you don't have all the above, with the weather becoming so unstable, kind of like the people, you really don't know how Mother Nature is going to react or lash out that's going to catch people unaware such as they have been caught unaware in Texas. We need to pray for the people in Texas. We need to pray for people all over this country that have obviously turned their back on God and upon their relationship with God. And we need to pray for these people that these people eventually will come back because it talks about that he has not found our works perfect yet, that they will come back before it is too late. Thank you for listening, and I hope that you enjoy this particular show as we are looking at various things happening on the headline news. Thank you. in place still without power three million customers which is a lot more than just three still without power three remains frozen in place still without power three million customers which is a lot more than just three million people and winter isn't done battering the south just yet meteorologist Pedram javahiri joins us live with the forecast Pedram, when is texas finally going to get a break Laura, you know, I think sometime late this weekend, early next week, we see a dramatic shift for the better. And incredibly, some models suggest we could be in the 70s or 80s across parts of Houston towards the latter portion of next week. Really a far cry from what's happening here. So show you this. Temperatures this afternoon running some 20 to nearly 40 degrees below what is normal for this time of year. Of course, this is a long duration event, but what is happening at this hour across portions of central and southern Texas is what the National Weather Service in San Antonio and Austin say has the potential to be the most significant of all of the weather events that we've been talking about this week, which is a pretty a decent round of uh, freezing rain. And we're seeing that accumulate here across portions of San Antonio 
Ohio on into Austin. That's indicated in the purple colors here. All of that shifting eastward towards Houston. This is freezing rain coming down at this hour, and officials are urging anyone along portions of the I-35 corridor, points around the hill country and eastward, to stay off the roads at this hour. You'll notice 100 plus million Americans underneath winter weather alerts yet again. And here we go with the ice accumulation forecast that could exceed a quarter of an inch to a half an inch in some areas around eastern Texas into portions of Louisiana. Mind you, a lot of these areas underneath snow at this hour could see a glazing of ice to as much as three quarters of an inch to one inch. So this would be a significant impact in an area that is freezing, that has very little to no power, and then potentially losing additional power here because of this ice accretion over the next few hours. Let's 70s next week, though, that got my attention. I'm sure that will come as welcome <laughs> relief to so many right now. Yes. All right, Padron, thank you so much. Appreciate it. All right, those winter storms and power outages forcing cities and states to delay vaccine distribution. No power means no freezers, so vaccines that need to be kept ultra cold can spoil, and the vaccines that haven't arrived yet are, are held up by logistics. Snow and ice at a distribution hub in Tennessee caused a delay in vaccinations over in Colorado. In Florida, some 2,000 residents in Miami-Dade County missed their second vaccine dose due to the weather delays. We'll be right back. On the net. It's pretty obvious that um, Texas has been caught as the old saying goes, with its pants down pertaining to this weather event. It's lawyer. And like I said a while ago, I hope that I hear not of any more cases of people freezing to death, but you know that that's not going to be the case. I just pray that it's not going to be as bad as what I'm thinking that it could possibly be. They're saying that already this particular storm that's hit this event this cold snap is going to cost the economy somewhere between 50 and 60 uh, billion dollars. I think they're off on their target, probably about half. In other words, whenever it's all said and done with, the economical cost in behind all this is probably going to exceed Hurricane Harvey or Hurricane Katrina, which give or take was about $125 billion pertaining to those two storms. Um, once more, whenever you're dealing with so many things that are going on on the planet towards people being a radical, you're going to see a radicalness happen pertaining to environmental changes, pertaining to global irregularities. Meantime, a leading House Democrat is now suing Trump and Giuliani for inciting the deadly violence at the U.S. Capitol. Using a law that was designed to combat the Ku Klux Klan, Congressman Benny Thompson accuses Trump and others of conspiring with far-right groups to prevent the certification of the election. They had Confederate battle flags, which, as you know, was a symbol uh, of the Confederacy uh, that was fought over slavery. So people coming in calling themselves patriots, uh, breaking into the United States Capitol. We can't condone this kind of action, and we have to put a stop to it. The Senate will hold a joint hearing on the <coughs> Capitol riots next week. Lawmakers are requesting testimony from the D.C. Metro Police Chief, the former sergeants at arms, and the former U.S. Capitol Police Chief. For the second time in a... Once more, the messenger put out a message in 2005, towards a bloody road ahead. Since then, we have seen occurrences after occurrences after occurrences unleash itself on society pertaining to slayings, innocent people being massacred again and again and again. And now the state of Tennessee has uh, revealed its true colors in trying to protect the government from coming down on its Second Amendment rights. It's just unbelievable how people are fighting. And I hate to put this in the wrong perspective, and I don't want people to think that I'm trying to usher in the, the millennial be, because I'm really not. But whenever it comes time to accept reality, 
towards the degree that you need to accept reality in, you need to stop being resistant. You need to stop fighting against the elements and, and, and what is foreseen as being the truth. And the people here for the past 30 something years are still fighting against a ministry that has been preordained by God. many months, North Korean hackers are accused of a cyber attack on a major vaccine developer. Will Ripley, live in Hong Kong for us this morning. And, and Will, which, which developer and why? What do we know? Hey, Christine, the latest target, according to a South Korean lawmaker, is Pfizer, the American biotech company that has developed a successful COVID-19 vaccine. North Korean hackers are accused of stealing data about that vaccine and about treatments for COVID-19. And this is not the first time. Now, there's a little bit of a dispute in South Korea. The spy agency that the South Korean lawmaker says he got the briefing from is saying they never said Pfizer specifically, but they are saying they talked about a number of different companies that are being targeted by North Korean hackers back in November. Reuters said it was AstraZeneca that was targeted, and Microsoft accused North Korean hackers of sending fake emails claiming to be World Health Organization representatives to a number of different employees of tech companies trying to get into their systems, I should say biotech companies, the companies that are trying to help people heal from COVID-19. Now, this is interesting because North Korea claims not to have a single confirmed case of COVID-19. There were even these new images that were released in state media showing Kim Jong-un, the North Korean leader, with his wife in public for the first time in more than a year. There's been a lot of speculation in South Korean intelligence that his wife was laying low because of COVID, but you saw the two of them in these photos, no mask, surrounded by an audience in a packed auditorium, North Korea trying to project that they don't have a problem with the pandemic. They've closed their borders off from the rest of the world for more than a year. But sources inside the country are telling me, Chris, it's a very different situation on the ground. Only a handful of foreign diplomats left there. They say there are checkpoints. There's a lot of nervousness for a country that says it doesn't have a problem with the pandemic. Yeah, exactly. All right, Will Ripley for us in Hong Kong. Thanks, Will. Well, Mexico is not happy with what it sees as unequal and unfair distribution of coronavirus vaccines that favor richer countries. And they're taking the case to the United Nations. CNN's Matt Rivers has more from Mexico City. Christina and Laura, it's safe to say, what's more, whenever you have this many irregularities going on on the planet, regardless whether it's North Korea lying, or regardless whether it's another country begging for help pertaining to the coronavirus, you have a very, very unstable environment. And that's what we're dealing with right now, simply because of what didn't happen that should have happened in 1988 during Ronald Reagan's administration that the Mexican government is not thrilled with the way vaccines are being distributed all around the world. It was on Tuesday morning that we heard from the foreign minister here in Mexico who basically expressed that displeasure. Here's a little bit of what he had to say. Regarding what is happening in the world, the inequality, the inequity, there is an access to vaccines. The countries that produce it have higher rates of vaccination, and Latin America and the Caribbean have much less. So what he's basically saying there is that at a time when everyone around the world deserves to be getting a vaccine, it does appear that richer countries are making out better than poorer ones when it comes to vaccinating their populations. To that end, the Mexican delegation at the UN Security Council later on this morning is expected to introduce a formal complaint about this issue. And you know, if you look at the list, of countries around the world that have administered the most doses of vaccines, there's a lot of rich countries nearer at the top of that list. I'm thinking of the United States, other countries like China and the United Kingdom. And all of this comes at a time when Mexico's vaccine rollout program is going quite slowly, despite the fact that they have managed to secure purchase agreements for up to 230 million plus doses of vaccines. We're not exactly sure when all those doses are going to arrive, and they're just not arriving fast enough as of Tuesday afternoon, the Mexican government had only managed to administer roughly 750,000 doses of vaccine. 750,000 doses of vaccine. 50,000 doses of vaccine to its population. Christine, Laura? Once more, some of that may be on the count of being stifled out of the loop <clears throat> in regards to the richer countries, but you also have to be looking at at it from a reality standpoint is that if they thought that much of themselves and if they thought that much of their citizens 
how come they didn't devote more time, energy, and yes, funds in trying to step up in getting the vaccine quicker so that there wouldn't be so many fatalities. You have to understand that a lot of these groups, it doesn't matter if it's in a form of a nation or the form of a country or the form of, of a state, they have to become accountable for their own actions towards what they're not doing that they should be doing. In other words, the government can't just do everything. But whenever you have such arrogance, people <clears throat> that think that they're above and beyond the natural elements pertaining to the laws of the land because they want to become a sovereign whatever, a sovereign state, a sovereign country. Um, whenever you have this type of arrogance going on, the Bible's very clear towards stating the fact that pride cometh before a fall. And that's exactly what we're looking at right now towards all these major bad events that continue to keep happening all over the world on a global scale. Matt Rivers, thank you so much for that. Well, a new overhaul of Georgia's citizen's arrest law, the one that was used to justify the shooting death of Ahmaud <coughs> Arbery last year is on the way. Under the new law, within one hour, someone put under citizen's arrest has to be released or the police have to be called. Arbery, a black man who was unarmed, was chased down and shot to death by three white men who claimed to be conducting a citizen's arrest and acting in self-defense. Video evidence suggests otherwise, and all of the men are now facing felony murder and other charges. <coughs> all right, let's take a look at markets uh, around the world. All right, let's go forward. We know Bitcoin is excelling and exceeding. We know Bill Gates is still trying to profit, profiteering. <coughs> off of the climate crisis. Um, it's not that he's actually concerned about civilization, but the fact of the matter is he's concerned about trying to make the almighty dollar and be at ahead of the curve in what's going on on the planet. Let's see what's going on here now. I think there's something else coming up. I think it was the gun rights issue, I think. I don't know for sure. He's taking shit. And then this. With Allison Camarada and John Berman. Welcome to our viewers in the United States and all around the world. This is New Day. It is Wednesday, February 17th, 6 o'clock here in New York. And... Merry Christmas. Thank you. So I know it's the middle of February, but that's the headline of a deeply revealing town hall with President Biden overnight, his first, right here on CNN. Merry Christmas. That is when, God willing, he says the country and our lives might start to feel normal. <coughs> he made all kinds of news during the town hall. He says the U.S. should have enough vaccine doses for everyone who wants one by the end of July. He said now is the time to go big an economic relief bill. He wants K-8 schools open by the end of his first 100 days in office, not just one day a week, but five days. He wants teachers prioritized for vaccination. So a lot of specific news line items. <coughs> but the biggest takeaway was a literal and tonal call for a return to normalcy, not just in coronavirus, but in life. The president said the last four years has been spent talking about Trump he wants to spend the next four years talking about the American people. Okay, meanwhile, more than two dozen people have died from a massive winter storm crippling much of the South. Millions are still without power this morning in Texas in the <coughs> middle of record-breaking cold temperatures. Much of America's fourth largest city, Houston, is still in the dark. 
There are growing questions this morning about why the Texas electrical grid failed so badly. The weather is also impacting vaccine distribution, appointments being canceled, shipments being delayed. So we'll talk to local officials about what's next. But first, we begin with all the headlines from President Biden's town hall with Jeremy Diamond. He is live for us at the White House. Jeremy. I don't want to watch this right here, right now. To me, what's essential on the headline news is the death of people dying, freezing to death in Texas, and probably some in Oklahoma and Kansas and other places of the country. It ain't just Texas. I didn't watch the town hall. What he discussed was some pretty in-depth things that need to be discussed. And I agree, we need to quit focusing on Donald Trump and focusing on ourselves, because as far as I'm concerned, Donald Trump and his administration wasn't nothing but a big distraction in regards to the things that we should have all been focusing upon instead of being entertained by the Trump Trumpism that has in, endowered the, the country. Up of nominees for the 22 contest. Go forward, keep going. We're gonna have to quit politi po political size and everything. Right now, so we have a latest uh, live report for you coming up. All right, that's coming up now. Let's go forward, forward. <clears throat> Dozen people have now died from this power. Here we go. Developing this morning, more than two dozen people have now died from this powerful winter storm that has crippled much of the southern United States. Millions of customers are still without power this morning in Texas, and the snow and freezing rain keeps falling. Seeing as Camila Bernal live in Dallas with the latest on this. First of all, welcome to New Day. It's great to have you. Second, this is a mess. Hey, John, good morning. It really is a mess. And what you're seeing here behind me, this really is a rare sight in Texas. People are literally freezing inside their homes. Temperatures reaching 20. It's not a mess. It's catastrophic. It's the same thing as it would be if a hurricane was hitting right now. Our major flooding going on. Once more, the professionals, the state and federal government should be held accountable for what's going on right now down there in Texas <clears throat> towards um, trying to privatize their grid to the degree that now they're on their own. Kind of like what they was trying to do in the 90s towards succeeding from the union. 30 degrees, and they're wondering why this is still happening. This storm came in uh, Sunday into Monday, and people are still without power this morning. Encore, the power company here in Dallas, did say that overnight, the lowering of the demand helped bring back some of the power. <coughs> but the reality is that here in Texas, nearly 3 million people are still without power. There's a lot of political finger pointing, but people are really just wanting to know when their power is going to be back, and at the moment, they do not have those answers. Arctic temperatures and rolling blackouts Sad. hammering Texas as the country sees record lows throughout the South and Plains states. Sad, sad, more sad. than 3 million homes and businesses without power and heat, including more than 1 million residents in the Houston area. City officials slamming the Electric Reliability Council of Texas, the private company that runs about 90% of Texas's electric grid. We've been hit hard by nature this week, but we can't deny that some of this is a man-made disaster as well. And the 5 million residents of this county and really this region and this state will deserve answers from ERCA and the state once this is over. ERCOT CEO saying the company is dealing with more outages because of frozen wind turbines and limited natural gas supplies. I think what uh, has happened here is 
uh, a response that kept the grid from collapsing, uh, that kept us from going into a blackout condition. And certainly, uh, we need to look at what has happened here once we get everybody back online, which is the number one priority. Texas Governor Greg Abbott placing the blame squarely on ERCOT and has called for a review of the electricity system in the state. The power generators froze up in their equipment uh, was incapable of generating power. And then on top of that, of that, the natural gas that flows into those power generators, that is frozen up also. What ERCOT should have been able to do is to have backup systems in place. They have provided zero explanation why they do not have backup systems in, in place. The state's what? See, whenever I talk about the people becoming erratical, um, Whenever I talk about the weather becoming a radical, in the 60s and throughout the 70s, up until about mid-80s, <clears throat> you could always count in the state of Tennessee towards it getting cold and us having some brutal winter weather. You could almost always count on having at least one snow and possibly three or four different snows. You could almost bet money on it, on the calendar, that every year was the same. But since the mid-80s, since we've started going through this transformation period towards the weather and the people becoming so irregular, just since I have been back here in Northwest Tennessee, the first winter was a so-so type winter and even um, not just 50, the, the year of 15, but, but the uh, year of 16, we had a little bit of cold weather and a little bit of snow. But then since then, yeah, we've had a little bit of cold weather, but no snow. And the amount of cold weather that we've gotten was very, very small in comparison to what we used to get back in the 60s and the 70s and the early 80s pertaining to it getting cold long about November and staying cold up until about April. The weather patterns has totally changed in comparison to what it was 40, 50 years ago. And the professionals know this. They know this. And to be caught this unaware for the state of Texas, even though it's a southern state. They have no one to blame but their own because they have become too conservative in their errant behavior in thinking that they was above and beyond this type of incident happening to them. And it's not just Texas. It's this whole country that obviously thinks that they can do without God. They think that they can do without the relationship with God. And they think that they can just be high-minded and going about their business and doing whatever that they want to do and using God as some sort of a ploy that, oh, I'll have a relationship with God whenever I really and truly need God. Right? That's not what, that's not what God is supposed to be about. If you'll study the commandments of God, thou shalt not have no other gods before thee, and and two or three other of the commandments that does talk about God, he was specifically talking about what he expects out of we the people. And whenever we the people no longer want to function in that same reality, then is whenever we have to deal with stuff like we're dealing and have been dealing with, for the past five or six, seven years towards all these irregularities going on. Going from one extreme to another. Going from extreme hot to extreme cold. Extremely wet to extremely dry. Seeing how many hurricanes hit last year, broke all-time record, got up to something like $95 billion worth of damage. Not million, but billion 
all over the countryside, including the fires, including the floods, including the hurricanes. And now we're on another row of natural catastrophes that may very well meet or even compass the dollar amount figure this year that happened last year. If we don't change our lifestyles, we're going to see more radical behavior coming from the heavens because it talks about all the sorrows that will fall upon the humanity towards it being the woes. And if you don't believe that these things will occur, sit around and wait because eventually it's going to be just like the Walmart slogan, coming near a neighborhood near you. It will eventually wake you up or you'll be caught to the point that you wish that you had been awoken. Water supply is now in jeopardy. In Galveston, Texas, the water supply is critically low. And in Houston, the mayor warning its residents to conserve water. And I did speak to a family in Houston that told me that once they started losing the water pressure, they went out to try to get some water. They could not find any water in any of the stores in their neighborhood. It is completely sold out. And so officials are telling people to be patient and to be careful, especially because there's been an uptick in carbon monoxide poisoning. There's dozens, including children, that have been taken to the hospital. At least four people died yesterday. And it may seem like common sense, but people here are not used to this and they're simply trying to stay warm john and i was told also in this same report maybe not this one but another report that uh they're basically imprisoned in their situation to the point that so many people as went outside to to try to stay warm in their automobiles and now they've all run out of gas because of just sitting there running 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 towards their vehicles running, staying warm. And now they've gone to the gas stations and, and none of the gas stations has got gas because their um, pumping stations are down. They can't pump gas. They're frozen. Well, I spoke to my niece a day ago, pretty close to Kansas City, Missouri, about halfway over there in Lynn, Lynn, Missouri, is where she lives. And she said that she went to seven, six or seven different gas stations looking for kerosene because that was the way that she used alternative heating and she could not find kerosene nowhere. Nowhere. And I asked her, I said, what are you going to do? She said, I'm going to wrap up in clothes and I'm going to put on thermo underwear and I'm going to walk around with a blanket. And I'm going to hope that my pipes don't freeze. Because at the time, whenever I was talking to her, it was already in the single digits. And I think they fell way below the, the uh, minus range. I think they got something like 10 below zero the uh, either last night or the night before. And you're just going to have so many situations like this or situations where people has used improper heating towards houses burning or, or people getting carbon dioxide poisoning towards dying. You know, they say that you never want to crank your vehicle up inside your garage. Why? Because it captures carbon dioxide and carbon dioxide is a slow killer. In other words, you'll fall into like a coma, a coma type state and not even realize it. And the next thing you know, you never wake up. You never wake up. You never wake back up. Why? Because you have died in your survival tactics. It's so sad how people has become so unprepared. I'm going to use that analogy. Unprepared. Thank you very much that report. Appreciate it. A lot of questions this morning about what has gone on in Texas. You know where they have cold weather? Minnesota. You know where they have cold weather? Iowa. You know where they don't lose power like this? Minnesota and Iowa. This is a choice.
that the Texas Power Company and Texas officials have made. A long time ago. I mean, because oh. they wanted independence. Oh, it was not just independence, but over the last several years, they have made the choice not to spend the money to winterize the infrastructure like this. And they've had cold weather like this. I think it was 2011, 2018, but they still have made the choice not to upgrade to deal with this. We're going to be talking to local officials about what now and how this went so horribly wrong. All right, Johnson & Johnson's vaccine rollout will be delayed. We have brand new reporting about what... In ending, Texas is a marvelous state to be a part of. They have agriculture. They have oil and gas. They're close down by the Gulf towards getting fishery and and all other types of stuff coming out of the ocean. Texas is a grand state to live in. And to see something like this occur to the good people in Texas only speaks volumes about their professionals, about their authorities that's running the show down there in these regards. Thank you for listening. Good luck to all of us as we end each program from the Windmill Ministries here at 291 Thompson Road, Sharon, Tennessee, zip code 32255, and once more, Shalom.